Hey everyone, this is Justin with Digital Tutors, and in today's top tip, we'll talk about a common issue that comes up in ZBrush when sculpting cloth or other really thin pieces of geometry. That is, how can we sculpt on one side without affecting the other? So here's this sort of superhero character, and the geometry that we build in ZBrush, if we were to go ahead and do some sculpting, let's say, on just the body, got a standard brush, Z-add, and uh, a brush size of around 40, just come in and start to do some brush strokes on the front here, we don't really have to be concerned about those strokes showing through on the back. Okay, the geometry is thick enough where the brush size doesn't go all the way through and we can sculpt here and then we can come on the back and do some sculpting and we don't have to worry about that going through. Now when we're sculpting very thin pieces, things like maybe some metal pieces that we have or some mechanical uh, parts, maybe very thin that we want detail on one side or even things like this cape that is actually a very thin piece of geometry here where we actually see both sides. Okay, And so if we're doing something like this cape, and go ahead and solo this, if we were to go in and do some sculpting here on this side, and let's say, you know, bring some wrinkles in, you know, that sculpting is actually going to show through on the other side. Okay, So pulling out in this direction, you're actually pulling the back faces as well. So these are the back faces on this side if we're looking in this direction. If we're looking in this direction, the other side's the back faces. And so that actually pulls those out. So you can see it's a positive effect here, a negative effect here. Just because the brush size is showing through the thickness and affecting the geometry on both sides. Okay, And we can take our draw size down so that it doesn't show through, but the draw size is so small that you can't really get the effect that you want. So how can we actually sculpt on one side of a very thin piece without necessarily affecting the other side? Well, there are a couple of ways that we can accomplish this. One way would be to use polygroups. Now to see our polygroups, we'll turn on our polyframe button here. And you can see that this cape actually has a few polygroups. The blue group on the outside, a green on the inside, and then one on the edge. Okay, So depending on how your geometry is created, those may be created automatically. Otherwise, you can manually create your own polygroups. I uh, going down under polygroups under the tool palette, a polygroup sub palette, and there are different ways of creating those groups. Okay, some may be easier than others depending on how your geometry is configured. In this case, though, we have these polygroups already set up, and so what we can do is actually use auto masking within our specific brush to only affect specific polygroups. So if we go into our brush, and this is just the standard brush, we'll go under the auto masking sub palette. And you can see right at the top, there's an option for mask by polygroups. Right now it's set to zero, so the effect of our stroke doesn't pay any attention, doesn't pay any attention to the, uh, the polygroups. And so what we want to do is set this up all the way to 100. And now the strokes, wherever we stroke first, for instance, if we stroke on this blue polygroup, the only polygroup that's going to be affected by this stroke is the blue one. Okay, And that goes for, you know, if we were to stroke all the way across here, it's not going to affect the other polygroups. Okay, so if we come in here, same thing, go in and stroke on the green polygroup, and it's not going to have any effect on the blue polygroup. Okay, you can lessen that effect by taking this value down. So if your thin piece of geometry is separated on polygroups, or if you can go in and really easily separate those into polygroups, that's one way uh, to constrain your strokes to one side of a piece of geometry. Another way would be, again, to use auto masking, but this time we're going to use back face masking. So if we just turn this on without doing anything else uh, and come in here and start to stroke on this and, and we'll stroke on these polygons facing us, the ones on the inside are now the back faces because they're facing the other direction. If we go in here, you can see that nothing has really changed. Uh, our, the effect of our stroke is going through the mesh just as it would before. But if we come in here and start to raise our intensity of the back face mask and come in here and start to stroke some detail in here. You can see that now automatically it knows that okay I want to only affect the faces that are pointing towards me. Anything that is within my uh, brush radius that's pointing the other way uh, I don't want to have any effect on. And so that's a really quick and easy way to just mask out and not affect those polygons that are facing the other way. Okay, so I can come in here, sculpt on here, and it's not going to affect the other side. 
okay and you don't have to worry about polygroups setting up polygroups all you have to do is turn on that uh, back face masking there in your auto masking so you know if you're doing wrinkles on something like this maybe some of the some of the wrinkles you want to actually show through both sides and so in those cases maybe you want to turn that auto masking off but maybe you want to put some sort of an emblem on your cape and you want to sculpt that in and you don't want the emblem to show through on the other side uh, that can come in handy there so whenever you're working with very thin pieces of geometry whether it's uh, cloth or you know some sort of a thin pieces of metal for your vehicles or your weapons or things like that you want to add some sort of maybe stamp detail or you want to add an emblem or some kind of detail that you don't want to bleed through to the other side make sure to check out the auto masking functionality within your brush you can mask by polygroups and you can also use back face masking to really quickly have your strokes only affect one side of the mesh well thanks for joining us and make sure to check back often for more top tips from digital tutors